Hello and welcome to Dr. Red Frizzle here and today we'll talk to you about the collecting duct of the kidney. Right, okay, so first things first, um, how, how do we control water inside our body? So, so the way that we can gain water is by eating, eating food, drinking and by metabolism, which is the breakdown of our food for example, which means that there's obviously some water in our food, so when we break it down we get that water for our body to use. Um, so that's how our body gains water. And so there's a few ways that our body loses water, and this is like urine, like when you go to the toilet, um, sweat, breathing, and feces when you go to the toilet. Um, right, okay, so that's how we gain and lose water. Now, the permeability, which means the, the, um, the, the willingness, if you like, to absorb from our, from our, um, from our cells lining the collecting duct, um, the permeability can be adjusted, um, and how it's how it's done, how it does this, how the cells do this rather, is is by placing aquaporin channels in the cell membrane. I'm not sure if you can see this, but these cells here and here are are, are the cells lining the collecting duct, which is the final part of the nephron. Essentially, I've drawn drawn you a quick diagram sketch of the nephron, but you should really watch my other videos if you want to get a if you want to get a sense of where the nephron is and sort of how that relates to the kidney. But anyway, in this video I'm going to discuss to you primarily about this last bit of the nephron known as the collecting duct. So the, so the permeability is adjusted by placing these aquaporin channels in the cell membrane. So this enables water to enter the cells. So how do these aquaporin channels actually get into the membrane? What happens is, I've drawn you this little structure here that's called the Golgi apparatus. I'm not sure if you've heard of this, but this is where vesicles are assembled. Now vesicles are basically packages and what happens is these, these aqu aquaporins are manufactured in these, set, in these cells lining the collecting duct and then they have to be, they have to be assembled into vesicles in order to be placed in, in the cell membrane um, here essentially. So, so, so they're packaged into these, these secretory vesicles which are used to increase the permeability of the walls of the collecting duct cells um, Around here you've got some tissue fluid and this is where your blood is. So the reason why I've drawn blood and tissue fluid on here is because it is because once water's passed into these cells, it can then be passed passed back into the bloodstream to, to, to like enable the the concentration of water to, to be in the blood, to be the correct concentration of water in the blood. And and the reason why this is so important is because when blood flows around our body, um uh, pretty much all cells are, are, are made up of blood and blood transports substances around the body that are needed for chemical reactions within cells. So, so in order for the blood to flow, um, the actual majority, the main bulk of the blood is, is comprised of water and this is why this is so important to reabsorb mu as much of this water as, as we can through this collecting duct to the kidney. But there are other, other places where water is reabsorbed, such as the loop of Henle here, um, it's, it's also reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule, which is this first little squiggly bit here, but it's primarily this primarily takes place in the collecting duct. Now you're probably wondering, well, what, what what determines whether these aquaporins actually 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 are manufactured by these cells? How do these cells know when to produce these aquaporins? And the, and the answer to that is is because ADH, which is a which is um, an antidiuretic hormone, um, which is produced in, in our neurosecretory cells in our brain, um, it's produced in the neurosecretory cells in cell body because cause a, a neurosecretory cell basically is a cell that has cell body in the middle, it then has a quite a short axon, um, it then has that's some as a dendron down here, you don't need to worry about that, basically a, um, antidiuretic hormone, I can't forget the name of it, um, it's manufactured in the cell body of this neurosecretory cell um, and then what happens is it travels up into the posterior pituitary gland in our brain, which is where it's secreted into the blood, which then it travels to this collecting duct in order to increase the permeability of the collecting duct wall or, or membrane, if you like, by, by inserting these aquaporin channels. Um, now, you, you're probably thinking, um, what, what does antidiuretic hormone actually mean? Why is it called antidiuretic hormone? Well, if you think of a diuretic, uh, essentially a diuretic is something which makes you go to the toilet more, which makes you wee more. Um, so antidiuretic means that, that, that more water is reabsorbed into the blood and you think, 
well, well, why does more water being reabsorbed into the blood, why does a lot of this hormone mean that there's not much urine produced? And the reason why is because it's anti-diuretic, so it means, it means that more water is reabsorbed into the blood, uh, and because it's anti, it means that there's less water that's, that's passed down the collecting duct and into, into, our, um, into our bladder to be stored before we urinate. So basically, it actually reduces the amount. And a lot, a lot of people. The reason why I'm stressing this is because a lot of people sort of get this wrong in exams and stuff, and and it's quite frustrating really because it's it's quite simple. But antidiuretic means you don't go to the toilet much because a lot of it's reabsorbed to the blood, and the blood is not what you excrete. What you excrete is what travels down this collecting duct and into our bladders, where it's stored before it's it's excreted. So there's a few key words that you need to know: osmosis. Osmosis is just the flow of water down a concentration gradient. And, and the reason why I'm talking to you about osmosis now is because um, osmosis is, is how in the, in the brain this neurosecretory cell is actually triggered. So this is our brain, and there's a part of our brain here, for example. It's called the posterior pituitary gland. If you can't read this, I've just wrote PPG, for posterior pituitary gland. Um, and down here we've got our neurosecretory cell that I've just drawn as a line um, in the middle of a bubble known as the cell body, um, and basically this part of the neurosecretory cell, as I've said before, secretes this antidiuretic hormone. That it's stored in the pituitary, posterior pituitary gland until it's needed. That's that's released into the bloodstream, what, where it it brings about these number of effects by placing more aquaporin channels in in the membrane of this collecting duct wall. Um, so so basically that's that's pretty much it. Apart from you have receptors in the hypothalamus which is basically the center of the brain pretty much there's an area in the brain called the hypothalamus so it's right hypothalamus and the area in this hypothalamus um, has osmoreceptors in it now these osmoreceptors look like our cells which shrink when osmosis is great and the re and it, this is very hard to explain but basically your, your bloodstream here is here for example um, say this little scribble here is your bloodstream it, in order to, for water to go into that bloodstream it needs to be down a concentration gradient because there's not many mitochondria here so that indicates that there's not an active process taking place which we know that it must be osmosis because osmosis is a passive process which means it does not require energy from ATP therefore it's not an active process and, and basically because our neuro neurosecretory cells are in the brain here that they lose water by osmosis down the concentration gradient into the blood which means that they shrink and this shrinkage of these osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus results in this neurosecretory cell cell body secreting the, uh, the um, antidiuretic hormone which alters this permeability so that's sort of the control mechanism which is quite a, co a complicated concept to get your head around but that is essentially how, how this works and, and there's a, obviously a series of enzyme control reactions which, which instate these, um, the, these aquaporins into this cell membrane that you don't need to know in too much detail. You just need to know that there is a series of those particular enzyme control reactions. Um, and that's pretty much it. And I'll, I'll go into more detail in terms of the structure of, of like a neuron. But this, isn't a neuro, this is actually a specialist type of neuron, this um, um, neurosecretory cell is a... Is, it's called a cell, but it's pretty much it's very similar to a neuron. It's actually just a special, a particular type of neuron. Um, so I'll go into more detail with the structure of neurons in general in, in the later video. But for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to explain to you obviously how a bit about the collecting duct and how, how it works. So hope this has helped, and hope you understand more now about about how we control how concentrated our urine is, because because obviously I haven't mentioned this, but it, this should be quite obvious, which is why I haven't, because if there's a lot of water, that, like Travon does collect duct, and not much is reabsorbed, our urine's going to be dilute and we're going to need to go to the toilet a lot more. That's why in winter you need to urinate a lot more because there's less of this water that's reabsorbed. Obviously in summer it's going to be concentrated, which means it's a darker yellow colour. And this is because, uh, because an awful lot of water needs to be reabsorbed to the blood because it's hot because we sweat a lot and lose a lot of water by one of these mechanisms, which is the sweating part. Okay? So, so that's a bit about the collecting duct, and hope that helps. Um, see you in the next video. Goodbye.